LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels goes under the prospect spotlight. He's the most electrifying quarterback in the 2024 NFL Draft. We're going to tell you why and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day. As you know, I got to kick the intro to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Can you talk to him, baby? What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champ with those LSU Bengal Tigers, man. And we are here. We are here to bring you championship level content. So I'm running the NFL Draft 24-7, 365. This is the best, the go-to source for everything NFL Draft content that there is out there for the 2024 NFL Draft. Listen, I want to say shout out to our everyday. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. I'm going to say it at the top of the show, and I'm going to say it at the bottom of the show. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you comment after each segment and then make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed to the channel dp we are talking Jaden daniels at the top of this thing man we are going to break him down we are going to put him under the spotlight what are the expectations it seems like he's going pick number two right to the washington commanders washington commanders fans what are you getting right nfc east fans who do you have to play against does this guy remind you a little bit of rg3 then we're going to talk about the out of sight out of mind prospect kool-aid mckinstry can he still be cornerback one and then tyler newbin for a lot of people with safety one but he had an underwhelming 40 yard dash right which could affect his draft stock we're going to talk about all that and more but first up dp why don't you hit him with our title sponsor today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. make every moment more right now new customers get 200 back in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 200 bucks if your bet wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started Jaden daniels is the most electrifying quarterback in the 2024 NFL draft. And I know what people are saying. What about the guy at, at USC in SoCal? Like, isn't he electrified? He is. But when you have four or three type of speed, when you can throw up 237 rush yards against Florida in the SEC, when you can outrun Bama, entire defense, defensive linemen, edge rushers, linebackers, and corners and safeties, that ability with his legs and Jaden Daniels is so potent. And it's terrifying. Like I like Caleb Williams off script stuff, Keith, is, is scary because it's like he could just make a play because he moves around. He's so fluid, so elusive in the in the pocket, in the backfield. And that stuff's great. And make those throws down the field. Well, Jaden Daniels can run as far as he can throw, you know what I mean? At a very fast pace. And he can also extend the playbook. So when I look at Jaden Daniels, you think about and kids, I think we, we talked about Greg Roman. When you talk about these running quarterbacks, right? And I always go back to Lamar Jackson, especially early. And when if you want to design the run game for Jaden Daniels, I would take what Greg Roman did with Lamar. And it was a lot of the hey, this is gonna be mesh point in the run yep. game. Your eyes is panned to the backside defensive end. Okay, if that guy crashes on the running back, that you hit the edge every single time because that speed is going to put and strike fear in everybody. Whether it's Washington with Brian Robinson Jr. or New England with um, Ramondre Stevenson. Stevenson. Yep. At the end of the day, with Jaden Daniels in that backfield, he's going to make those guys much more potent as runners because that backside end is going to always have to stay put because you can't let him out of the pocket. I won't run the QB power stuff that they ran with Lamar because Lamar bulked up to about 215, 220. And everything to run the QB power, but I'll use the QB counters, Keith. Well, I got a uh, you know, guard tackle pulling, uh, you know, GT counters with those two guys leading in front of Jaden on the perimeter. I'll run that. But as a passer, I feel like he doesn't get the respect that he deserves. Like his numbers, like let's talk about it. 71 point 71.1 uh, percent completion percentage. He threw for over 3,800 yards. He had 50 total touchdowns. He had 40 passing. 10 rushing, and I believe he only had like four in uh four interceptions on the season. He doesn't put the ball in harm's way a lot. He's efficient in terms of protecting it. 
deep ball accuracy. He may be the best in the class in throwing the deep ball. It wasn't just the fact that he had Brian Thomas Jr. and Malik Neighbors. He's just a really good, a really good player and quarterback overall. But I think, and Keith, I think this is where you had some concerns. It's the not the inability to throw in the middle of the field. You you tell me if I'm wrong. I think he's a little hesitant to drill yeah. those drive passes in the middle of the field. And that, and that was the the transition DP. And I'll, I'll say this, and that's why people wonder why early on in the process I had a second round pick on him was because of that. But then, like I said, I went back to the film and rewatched it. I think year over year from the 2022 season to the 2023 season, I think he got more comfortable with it. I think it's more in a a check down type of situation, right? Like with, with his option routes or, you know what I'm saying? And then the, um, and then that slot wide receiver just kind of sit down in a hole. Right. And he's, if, if he's locked in on that guy, then I think he's good. The the situations is, I think we we'll talk about probably like the Ben Johnson, right? The Detroit lions style, mm-hmm. put, um, you know, play designs and offensive schemes is where it's a bunch of layered throws, right? Where you got to throw it, um, you know, over the linebacker in front of the safety, right? I don't think he's 100% confident in that. But I will say this, that you have to find some type of um, solace in the fact of there is no perfect quarterback prospect, right? Like everybody has flaws, everybody has holes. And I, and I think that if you, if the Washington commanders, and you're talking about if, if he goes number two, right? Who knows what happens, but seems like he's going to be the second overall pick. Washington commanders could get their hands on him. And you put him in an offense. You talked about the running ability, DP, with the the passing game. I want to, I mean, with the running game. I want to talk about the passing game in the style of plays that's designed. Right. I love him in those those play action bootleg situations where he's rolling out, gets close to the perimeter. And what LSU did was this. And I, I watch a lot of LSU games. I live in Baton Rouge, right? So I, I feel really confident in understanding their offense. Right? Is that. It, it could have been a lot of two by two sets, right? And then they put that, that that backside slot in motion, boom, play action bootleg right to the backside, roll to the front side. And then now that third guy, now you created a three layer situation, right? Where you have somebody in the flats, you have somebody working the intermediate parts, and then you have somebody going vertical. But then with the fourth option of that DP is what? Is that if Jaden Daniels doesn't see somebody open, now he can check, he can take, he can pull it down, I'm sorry, and run with his legs. And that's extremely important because with a player like him, I think, and, and I'm just, because what I try to do is just understand quarterback psyche too, right? Because you understand that so much of this is from the neck up. And he's one of those guys that I believe he gets comfortable with positive things happening, right? And the positive thing for him could just be simply moving the chains via his feet. And so he's able to pick up first downs, picking up his feet with his feet, right? Then now he's a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit less hesitant or less reluctant to throw the football in certain situations because he has the momentum behind him. So I, I think it's it's a it's a specific offense that I want to see Jaden Daniels in. And if he can be in that offense, I think yes, the the looking at him as a man, he could be a, a top 10, top 12 quarterback, I think is is very realistic. On the other side, is this that we we've seen that dual threat quarterback sometimes depending on play calling, right? Things that's around them. We've seen that production can waver, right? Like we watched yeah. Jalen Hurts go from MVP to, okay, he's probably a top 12 quarterback, right? Like we've just seen that conversation go. Lamar Jackson, right, has had years here and there where it's been MVP, and then it's been like, ah, man, he needs to play a little bit better, right? We, we've yeah. seen it go from time to time in that fluctuation. But, yes, I, I think if you draft Jaden Daniels, the expectation because he has all of the tools, especially throwing the deep ball accuracy, is that he can be a top 12 quarterback. And that's a quarterback that you can win with in the NFL. I want to ask you, DP, with the, the conversation of matching with the Washington Commanders, I personally like it because of Jahan Dotson and uh, Terry McLaurin. It reminds me of the duo because the people that are say like, hey, he had Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors. Well, if you get to the commanders, he's gonna have Terry McLaurin and Jahan, Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson. So that's not too bad, right? So right. how do you feel about that potential pairing of Jane Daniels with Washington Commanders? No, I feel like it's a I feel like it's a really good pairing, you know, for what they have offensively. Like I said, Brian Robinson Jr., Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. I think they still need to, you know, I think De'Ami Brown is still there as another deep threat guy. Uh so he has the guys to be a he's a vertical passer, right? And yep. uh, I think he has the, the 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 guys in place that can do that for him. I think he can absolutely not unlock, but get us back to rookie Jahan Dotson, where with Sam Howell, it just did not click and work. I think the main mm-hmm. thing for him, they have to improve the offensive line. Because even though he's a very dynamic and explosive runner, Keith, numbers-wise, granted, so 
he he in terms of sacks, right? 40 he had 24 his in 2021 when he was at Arizona State. His his freshman year he had 30 he was sacked 35 times. Then it in uh 2022 at LSU 45 sacks, dropped down to 21 this year. But his pressure to sack percentage for his career is 24.5. That's one of the worst. You know what I mean in terms of what we've seen through the draft. And he's got to be a he's got to be better and not just waiting and sitting in the pocket, right? What we talked about with Lamar Jackson versus uh, Pat Mahomes in the playoffs. Man, get out of the pocket. Get out of there. Don't just sit and wait for guys to get open. If it's, if they're not open, have that internal clock to get out of trouble. You have a free get out of trouble card, which is your athleticism. Use it more often. Don't just try to be a stone-footed pocket passer. Get out of trouble. Yeah, well, he can fit deep- them. They just got to improve that old line for him. DP, listen, this is what we're about to do, man. I'm, I'm about to call an audible real quick. I'm about to huddle up, call an audible. What we're going to do is we're going to talk more Jane Daniels after this segment because there's a couple more points that I want to bring up just with him being a dual threat quarterback. So coming up next, man, we're going to talk more Jane Daniels, and then we're going to ease our way into Alabama cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry. So stay tuned because we have more Jane Daniels conversation. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, what's the first thing that you do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go work out? take a nap, read a book, right? Cook some lunch, some dinner with your meal prep. What would you do, right? We always talk about having more time, but the question is time for what? Because if time was unlimited, how would you use it? Guys, being the best version of yourself is so important and therapy can help you with that. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Because again, when you are operating in the best um, mindset, mentality, you feel great, you typically produce better, all right? So I'm telling you now, as someone who's done it, gone through it, therapy can help. And if you think about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try, all right? Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We're gonna finish finish this discussion, Keith, and with Jaden Daniels, like, like as as we finish, you know, kind of talking about with Lamar Jackson, like we was talking about. I remember sitting there watching the AFC Championship game with you. He was like, Lamar is trying to prove a point, and they just kept feeling like that. And I feel like Jaden has moments like that, and that's why his pressure to sack percentage is high. Yeah, and I I think it's exactly that. And what you you see is is that. Everybody talks about the fair failure of dual threat quarterbacks or run first quarterback, right? So we've seen the transition of those guys running the football to like, hey, we have to learn to win from the pocket, right? Which my my opinion, you have to do it all, right? Like I just want the guy that can do it all, right? Wouldn't we all want that? Um, but what we'll see is that sometimes they have availability to pick up 10, 15 yards, right? And go back to that, that that was that the AFC championship game with the Baltimore Ravens, right? What's I believe that was the AFC Championship game. Yeah. And then you said you seen so much yardage in front of Lamar Jackson and he didn't want to run with the football is because you almost seemed like he had a point to prove. Same thing with Jaden at times, right? Is that, hey, or I would say the same thing with Jaden, 2022 Jaden, is that mm-hmm. he was standing in the pocket, hold the football. I want to show that I'm processing, right? And I think 2023, he stepped into just being himself, right? So we talk about the neck up, right? The, the quarterback counseling part of me, with draft Jaden Daniels, draw up the play designs. Jaden, sometimes go do you. You know, I won't be mad at you, right? You 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 block out the noise with the ESPN people breaking down where you should have hit this and did that. Well, guess what? The truth of the matter is when you're talking about the eye in the sky, it's a totally different view standing on the sideline. Trust me, it is not as a clearer picture, right? You don't get the slow-mo it. You don't get the highlight and put a circle around it. It don't look the same. So what I would tell them mm-hmm. is, they're not playing on the field anyway. So go ahead and block the noise out and you just do you. Let's worry about producing a productive offense. And Keith, I think, you know, to that point too, is like block out the noise. Get Who cares what some neck beard dude on social media is tweeting about you? Who cares if they call you a running back? Guess what? If you, if running the ball got your team to the Super Bowl and then you knocked off the San Francisco 49ers and won that ring, Lamar Jackson, who cares what they call you, right? They did the yep. same thing to Cam. It is the same thing to Vic. It does not matter. So it's like at some point, like you want them to, yes, play from the pocket, 
play within structure. Don't turn down the easy throws. If there's a guy in the flat, get it to him, right? Don't stare down a read into double coverage. You want him to, to like you said, play from the neck up. But when the opportunity presents itself, if the, if the defense forgets that you're a 4-3 athlete and they play man-to-man with no spy, you make them you make them for you make them regret that, right? Like you make them regret that. So if they drop off, they got your receivers plastered. Okay, 2.5 seconds. That 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 bell needs to go off in your mind. Like, you know what? Everybody's covered. There's nobody covering me. Like, you know what I mean? Let's play 11 on 11 ball real quick. Nobody's covering me. Say less. And I'm gonna go out here and make some plays. And I think, and to your point, Jaden's, you know, just from the numbers, Jaden's uh pressure to sack percentage in 2022, right? He had four, he was he got sacked 45 times. He had a 30.8 pressure to sack percentage. It dropped 21 sacks in 2023, and his pressure to sack percentage dropped to 20.2. So it improved greatly, right? Numbers completely dropped. Now you want to see him get that pressure to sack percentage down in, like in the 15s, maybe close to the 10, somewhere in there. But, but still yet, that's probably the one of the main things. Getting you know comfortable, like you said, throwing in the middle of the field, throwing over linebackers when you do see zone coverage for Jaden because he's got the arm talent. I don't, anybody that questions that he can't rip it, I remember watching him at Arizona State. You know, at, at, yeah, Arizona State. I remember watching him play, and I'm like, man, when he was protected, you see him go through his reads, and you could drill backside digs, yeah, front no, side it's... digs, stuff. He's got the arm talent to do it, right? Yep, I think it's does. more of a level of comfort thing. It's a okay. Uh, ball trajectory, um, making sure you take some steam off. Don't just throw it on the straight line. You want to get it over the guys, but don't get it over them like a full rainbow where that safety can come down and either pick it off or make a kill shot to your to your receiver, break, you know, break it on that end breaker, stuff like that. I think that's where he has to really improve uh, to where, like I said, get zone those underneath defenders and find his way. But overall, man, like that's something that you can coach. That's something that you can really like coach up and get – uh, and help him improve. And if you're an NFL team with a good QB coach, good offensive coordinator, and ask him, like, why are you not comfortable with this? Like, how can we get you comfortable with this? Where is it bothering you? And that's the part of coaching. Shout out to Mike Tomlin. You know what I mean? Listen to him on the Pivot Pod. And he talked about guys who say a dude can't learn or say a dude can't do this. Like, no, you just not, you just can't coach. You know, that's what, what it all boils down to. So I think Jay, like I said, he's the most electrifying QB in my opinion. Even with Caleb Williams in the same class, I don't I, watching his tape is so fun to me because of the throwing ability, but that dynamic running ability, it, there's nobody that matches it in this class. Yep, you know, with DP, let's keep this thing going and flowing, man. We said we was gonna talk a little Kool Aid McKinstry pro day reaction, and that's what we're about to do. Kool Aid McKinstry, man, I'm gonna pull up the numbers real quick, and this was with a foot injury, right? I believe. Oh, let me pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Here we go. A vertical jump. To him. Yeah, he, he just, yep, surgery. So he just, vertical jump was a 34.5, broad jump was a 10-1. 40 yard times, right? A couple reported 40 times, 4, 4, 7, 4, 5 flat. So that somewhere in there, right? And, and on film, we, we talked about it, right? Doesn't appear that guys run away from him, right? So if you ask me, I think the speed box, he checks it, right? Now, is he an elite level speed guy going to run a 4-3? I can't tell. I don't know of that part of it. I know that to me, in my opinion, he's fast enough. But DP, I think this puts Kool-Aid McKinstry, right? Because his teammate, Terrion Arnold, was, I think he ran a four or five flat also. Mm -hmm. um, and it appears that people right now are a little bit more excited of Terrion Arnold. Do you think it's because he's a newer prospect, right? And I was a guy that was really excited for him, but then I had to kind of not dial it back, but I had to go back and watch Kool-Aid also and get the appreciation back like, it's a really good cornerback, right? And you talked about it. All we can do as DP is watch best on best, right? Uh -huh. And this guy battled against Malik Neighbors twice, right? He battled against, you know, the, the Kayshawn Boutes, right? And you see how you feel about him. But Brian Thomas, right? So two first-round wide receivers, three with well, two first-round wide receivers. One we believe was a first-round talent until his stock plummeted. Um, right. And he held, he held his own consistently, DP. And that's just talking about the the lsu right not imagine the tennessee the georgias right he's played against high level athletes so i have to be honest i have kool-aid mckinstry still in my cornerback one conversation i think this is just an out of sight of mind out of sight out of mind prospect it's prospect fatigue it's like marvin harrison jr right it's like you know some of these other prospects that we've been watching for the past three years or we've been knowing about them since high school i think it's prospect fatigue but when you watch him rep for rep the quality percentage that you get 
I believe is as high as any cornerback in this draft class. Keith, hundred percent. Um, you know, and for him to run a four, four, seven, four, five flat on a busted foot that he has to get surgery on, for him to go out there and grit that out and say, "Listen, I'm gonna put give y'all something." I know it's not my full one hundred percent because I don't have that right now with this injury, but I'm gonna go out here and perform. I'm gonna go out here and compete, and I think that's why. Like Terion is uh, definitely a more fluid mover in terms of hip swivel transition stuff like that, but. Man to man, Kool Aid is is the clear best man to man corner, arguably in this class. So, yeah, I, I think if I had to categorize him, DP, I'll put it this: I think Kool Aid, in my opinion, is the more fluid mover. I think Terion is the more explosive guy. Um, yeah. I, I think like you know, like when you see him, yeah, like drive on Lad McConkey and stuff like that stuff gets you really excited, right? But Kentucky like you said, interception, like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the old interception play. against Ole Miss, be like, oh yes. man, this is. Like he he he's he has the more flash plays right, and then it's just then Kool Aid is just kind of over there on his side, just yeah doing his thing, just yeah. locking you yeah, down, not making making a lot of noise. I think Arnold's more like he's a guy that you can play man to man with, and also really he could thrive in zone because of that quick yep. twitch where he could flip I his agree. hips, turn, drop, drive. You know what I mean on the football. Where Kool Aid, I'm just want him in pure man to man. I want him line mm-hmm. up on. The, I want him at the line of scrimmage. Let him. He's patient. He's technical, he's refined, and it, he doesn't lose, you know, those those foot races. And just for some for for some, you know, to add context to what you were saying, 2022, right? LSU versus Bama. Kool-Aid McKinstry was targeted eight times. He gave up three receptions for 27 yards, averaging nine yards per catch, right? And only one yard after the catch on those eight targets. And against Malik Neighbors in that game, he three targets, two receptions, 16 yards. But Malik had to fight for those 16 yards. It was pushing, shoving. I have to like it was, it was full extension contested. of the arm to get free because Kool-Aid is just that just that sticky of a corner in, in terms of being in the hip pocket. He knows how to read the, the hips and the core of receivers. Like he's just so good in man to man. Where you know, like you said, you could always say out of sight, out of mind. He wasn't able to, he wasn't at any all-star game, he wasn't able to do anything at the at the combine. <clears throat> where if he was healthy and he could do things at the combine, he tests better than Terry Arnold, then that conversation and narrative, it definitely switches a little bit. Yeah, I agree 100% with DP. Let's keep it going because we not we had an action pack pro day um, yesterday, right? It, it was, what, Alabama, Ohio State, I mean, what, USC, right? You had Caleb mm-hmm. Williams in there. So what we're going to do is, but we also had another under the radar guard. We had Tyler Newman, I believe Minnesota's pro day was yesterday. And – you know, for a lot of people, he's safety one. So we want to get into that conversation. Pro day numbers. How do they translate, right? How do they directly correlate to his film? And is he still safety number one for us? So Tyler Newbin coming up next. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Family, right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. I'm going to repeat that. Right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That means that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. Guys, you can even pick who you believe, who you believe is going to win the entire thing, the whole kit and caboodle. Right, you can bet on that. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Thank y'all for making locked on NFL draft your first listen today and everyday shout out for being our everydayers. Tyler Newbin's pro day reaction, Keith. For most of us, I know for myself, he was. Safety one, and yep. you know, he had his pro day, but the numbers, Keith, I know you have them. Tell the people what the numbers were because they weren't great, yeah. And, and per Dane, Dane Brugler, right? I believe he was at his pro day. He said he has the confirmed pro day numbers. Um, he has Tyler Newbin, he came with 6'1, 205 pounds, a 45940, a 31 and a half inch vert, a, a 10 foot broad. And I believe a four five one short shuttle. 
So with 10 reps on a bench press. Uh, so DP, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass it back to you and get your reaction. <laughs> well, Keith, um, per Math Bomb, or, or uh, my guy Math Bomb on, on Twitter, his R, you know, who does the relative athletic score, uh, Tyler Newman has a, a RAS score of a 291. Uh, looks like unofficial right now. Uh, so, um, you know, it looks like some, some people were tweeting out that card, and that's just, that's rough, right? And I think, to put in context, like, all right, is that everything? No, because we we saw. Now I th- I'm pretty sure that that Kyle Hamilton jumped was more explosive in his jump, yeah, they were. vertical, yep. broad, and all that good stuff. But the 40 time threw some people off. Like, oh man, he's not a four four guy. But so so that play where he picked off uh, that pass against whoever it was, was that I Alabama? I think when he like it was like no, it was, out of like. Was it Florida State? I think it was Florida State. I think it was uh, okay. jo- uh, Jordan Travis. Um, he did you know, a couple three times. Three years. Crazy. Oh, yeah, like, from sideline, from like the opposite hash to the sideline. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Yep. And it was like, but for him, where he won wasn't just with pure athleticism. It was instincts. This instincts. man, you know, you know with, with, with Kyle Hamilton, he's a really good man-to-man guy, uh, outstanding ball skills. He can drop off into to zone. He's, he's just really instinctive. And when I look at Tyler Newbin, as much I don't like those numbers. I'm telling you, sure, I don't like those numbers, Keith. <laughs> I don't. I, like, it hurt me to see that four, five, nine, and that that thirty, one and a half inch vert. I'm like, oh, what is going on? Like, I kind of understood why he didn't do anything at the combine. At the pro, yeah, I the rather, combine, you know, yep. rather the agent tell him, you know what? Let's not do anything at the pro day either, bro. Like, let's just go right. ahead and leave some don't things like it. to be imagined, and let somebody draft you, and just like, man, the tape is go really good. Pull, pull a Marvin Harrison Jr., right? You say I'm out, I'm out on all Say I'm out, baby. I'm, I'm, y'all not getting no bad numbers from me. Like, we'll, I'll see you in rookie camp. You know what I mean? But I think instincts is where he wins because it's ball skills. He works as a, in, in split uh, split high coverages. He does live. He has lived on the roof in college, in the Big Ten, and everything. No, there's not the greatest off passing offenses in that in that conference at, at the time. But also, like he played the robber technique, working from high down to low, taking play, taking and robbing quarterbacks of opportunities in the middle of the field. So yes, the res doesn't look good. The pro day numbers doesn't look good. But I still think he is my top safety right now, mainly because what what the- round. What round would you take him? And I, I oh, saw so, it's gonna be day two. Yeah, it's it's it, it's day two, and I would probably and I'm, this is where the forty the forty yard dash is probably gonna affect it for me. Um, mm-hmm. is that I I think about especially nowadays, right in the NFL, college football, what's one of the most I guess famous routes is that slot fade, right, where the outside yeah, wide receiver yeah. just runs a quick hitch. And then they know you're playing man, that safety mm-hmm. sitting there. He's on that fast slot wide receiver. And then the slot wide receiver just runs past the safety, right? That's like a staple in every NFL and college offense right now. That's what makes me nervous, DP, <laughs> is those type of things, right? Is that as the safety, and I've seen it in my time at LSU, right? And you're doing scooch technique. You're trying to work your technique, trying to work leverage, right? But when that wide receiver is just flat out faster than you, there's yes. nothing you can do about it, DP. I remember we played against C.D. Lamb in, in, on the sideline, and then one of I think C.D. Lamb beat us, right, for a touchdown. I mean, we won the game. I think it was like 63 yeah. or 21, yeah, something that like that. Was, that. We won, it. Uh, yeah, we won the game, but <laughs> – I had to throw that in there. But then we um we like in this, you know, like real moment, right? Just to give out every day is like real inside, like so boom. So we come to the sideline, stuff like that. It's conversation with the defensive backs. It's like, hey, what what happened? He's like, coach, I just can't run with him, right? And and when you and when that sinks in that that guy is just faster than the guy that I have, there's nothing you can do about that, no. right? Like there, there, there's literally no answer for that guy, just just, just a flat out faster guy. Um, than what we have. So I, I that's the part that worries me, DP, is that obviously when you talk about the wide receivers versus DBs, that's that's a foot race, man. That's a foot race. And so I would say this, that coming in grade wise and I haven't given my final grade. But if you if I you know remember the film correctly and then transition everything, had a second round grade on Tyler Newbin. But with the 40, I probably would drop it some to a third round because I would probably drop the expectations for him. And can we just doubling back on the Kyle Hamilton conversation, right? And not compare him because I think Kyle Hamilton is probably one of the highest graded players I've ever seen. He has some of the Man. best defensive prospect film I has, have ever seen. So not comparing it from that perspective, but the 40 times, 
when Kyle, when we talk about the Baltimore Ravens, right? When he first came there, they tried to play him on a roof, right? But then what they had to do, they had to walk him down. So I'm thinking it may be some of the same things with Tyler Newbin. Maybe this guy is more of a strong safety. How you talked about that robber position, right? Maybe he's more of that than what he is single high or position, you know, situations to be playing man to man and things like that. So that'd probably how I look at Tyler Newbin now. Yeah, and, and, and just to compare in terms of like the, the, the straight line speed of where he tested, um, Kyle Hamilton, four five nine in, in the 40. He had a 20 yard split split of two six seven and a 10 yard split of one six, right? But it was the the vertical and broad. He was a 38 inch vertical and a 10 11 in the broad. So he was explosive. It just was the question of the straight line speed from the combine, which again, if you go back and watch the Kyle Hamilton's combine run, he was bobbing and weaving. You know what I mean? Instead of like, because he he just didn't have control to stay on the straight line. If he stays on the straight line, he probably runs closer to a four five five and better. You know what I mean? But still, yet he ran a four five nine same same time as um as Tyler Newton. But like I said, I I gave him like a mid second, so I probably am going to drop him down to like top to the middle of the third round, especially with all the other talent at other positions. Whereas like, okay, teams are going to be like, well. I can get good value if I get him in the third rather than, than take him in the second and still get a good football player because despite the testing, the tape is really good. This dude's instinctive, great ball skills. He's a ball hawk, and he takes the ball away. But also, I think, and like you said, Keith, that slot fade. Don't want him on those receivers. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want him to, on too many receivers. I will say that I will put him on tight ends because I feel like he can handle some of the tight ends in the NFL. And like, Granted, he's not. He's not as tall as I wanted him to be, but still, yeah, I think he can get walked down, play man to man against some of these tight ends that's detached. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's probably going to be a lot of strong safety, uh, rover, you know, roaming around, robbing uh, the 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 offense of of possessions, trying to get into the 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 middle of the field, take with those end breakers, especially those quarterbacks. You think about playing like the San Francisco 49ers. they run a ton of end breaking routes. Tyler yep. Newman would fit a defense. Like a, a Mike McDonald over with the Seattle Seahawks, right? They just they they got rid of what Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams. That's a really good fit for him because then he can kind of use him, similar to, to to those guys. But I'm gonna tell you, and, and I gotta go back to the film. Tyler Newman might have a contender in terms of that safety one spot, and that's my guy uh, Katan uh, Oladapo over at Oregon State because this is a guy's big, athletic, can play man to man, physical, do a lot of different things. So. It's just the numbers don't look great. The player is a good player, though. Yeah, and I think, you know, what we should do, DP, and I got this idea, man, as we wrap this show. What we should do is go through the safety class, man, and properly yeah. place these guys. You know how we did with the wide receiver rankings, right? And, and, and more so than rankings, we kind of tiered them off, but then also talked yeah. about the role, right? And I think that's going to be important when it comes to the safety class because there are NFL teams that are going to draft safeties, that need safeties. It's our job to tell our every day is where these safeties project to be, what to, what situation we want to be, scheme like you know schemes, things like that. So we'll go ahead and have a show like that, man. I think that'll be a really good show, be a high quality show. But DP, that wraps up another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, where we are the best source for everything NFL draft content. I want to say shout out to every day is thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Listen, I said at the top of the show, and now we're at the bottom of the show, man. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not. Subscribed. Subscribe to the channel with the best NFL draft content. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Code. That right there, that is my co-host, Damian Parson. You can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. Like we always like to say, man, y'all talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow free on YouTube. Wherever you listen to podcasts, get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day as y'all have a happy weekend. Be safe out there and come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.